again, this is Teresa Atkinson at Kettering University, and we are getting ready to talk about your slides. So our goal in making a presentation is to motivate our audience to do something, to make a decision, uh, to fund us in a project, what have you. How do we build great slides that help support this mission? What you should know before you get started is that PowerPoint, uh, well, it's very friendly to us. We've used it, many of us, since we were in high school. Its default presentation mode is not based on any kind of cognitive science. Uh, to put that a little bit more simply, just because this outline mode is the, the default mode PowerPoint offers, does not mean that it's the best mode or that it does a good job getting your ideas across. What I want to suggest to you is that when you make up slides like this, these are a great draft. Slides like this help you organize your ideas. The default mode of PowerPoint is really nice for the user, the presenter, but it's really, really terrible for the audience. We've talked about how when you look at a visual like this, you're going to read it before I can read it to you. And it's very dull. It doesn't do much to engage with the audience. And there are other problems with it. So let's talk about those other problems. There are a group of scientists called cognitive scientists. They study how your brain works and how you take in information. And what they know that many of you might not know is that information is processed in different parts of your brain. For instance, in the back of your brain, you're going to process the image or image information in uh, the region of brain by your ears. You're going to process sounds. And it turns out that that region, that pathway to the auditory cortex where you're going to process sounds, your processing of written language is going to follow a similar pathway and activate an area close to this. The problem with this is when I put up a slide that has lots of words on it and then I speak to you, I'm sending information through a common pathway and that information is going to go in through your ears and then the information from your eyes is actually going to come in through here and what you get is a traffic jam. What happens if you're just sending information along the auditory path and along the language path is that people will turn off one of the paths. Either you're going to stop looking at the slides and just listen to me, or you're going to stop listening to me and you're just going to look at the slides, or you're going to try to go back and forth and make the best of both worlds. But our brains are not set up to process both of those types of information at the same time, and so this creates a problem. Now, researchers have found that a better way to uh, get information into your audience's brain is to do this, to speak to the auditory part, so do your talking, and then send information to the visual part. So your slides, instead of being text-based, if they are visual, they go to a different part of your brain, you avoid the traffic jam problem, and now that you've kind of stimulated two parts of the brain, and they're going to talk to one another, share information, you have made stronger connections, and the likelihood that your audience is going to remember what it is that you've said is a lot higher. So basically, you want to have image information on your slides, you want to have auditory or spoken information through your presenter. So if you're going to do this, how can you do this? So we see here an example of a very common type of PowerPoint slide. It has a title at the top, this kind of says what the slide's going to cover, and then some information. And the speaker will generally read the information or say something that summarizes the information there. And, and to be honest, if you're going to summarize the information that's here, I'm not sure why you'd want to read it anyway. How could you do this? better in a way that stimulates the visual cortex and helps your audience remember what it is that you're saying. So this is the same information presented in a format that's called the assertion evidence format. 
And so this stuff, oops, sorry, this stuff up here, this is your assertion. And let me see, I think I changed my color of my pen by accident. Nope, it's still there, just dark. And this down here, this is your evidence, okay? So the evidence is visual based. You'll notice it has some text. But the idea is that you can have a little bit of text that you can read fast but the main part is to show how those text elements are related to one another. Instead of being just a list, now we know that, hey, you started with the Fortran 77. You can see very quickly that that progressed on to MATLAB applications, and now that's progressed on to Python applications. And so with this, you are going to remember the information a little bit better. How about another example? This is one that's more along the lines of what we do in mechanical engineering, so data acquisition, went from text to this thing that says, here's the assertion, we convert an analog to a digital sample, so we have to sample the signal. So here's the thing we want to study, here is the accelerometer, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Here's the accelerometer that uh, is documenting the acceleration, it outputs a voltage, we convert the voltage to digital, we sample the digital signal, and then we can post-process in software that we're used to. And now we see not only just information, but how one piece of information relates to the other information on the slide. We can do the same thing uh, with process flow. So this idea of assertion evidence is described really well in some web pages by Melissa Marshall and you are going to get to know Melissa Marshall because she has a TED Talk. And here it is. Talk nerdy to me. You're going to watch that TED Talk. And then this is optional. TED Talk, not optional. Um, and this, again, is on the uh, YouTube channel for the class. The speech delivery and visual aids pages at this website are really good. What's really nice, I think, is to look at these speeches because they're students, they're giving talks on projects and things they care about, and they're really very good. Um, so take a look at that. I think it will help you, and I'm, with that, I'm going to stop.